513 WMAZ Morning starts now. The last of our rain and storm activity finally starting to push out of the area. And we look ahead to a great second half of the week and weekend. I'll have those details for you coming up. Storm damage could impact your commute this morning. The road blocked in Dublin right now. Plus, one House and County woman now recovering after her house got destroyed in the storms. The item she says she's lost and why she's not the only one in her family seeing impacts from the storms. We've seen uprooted trees, debris, and down power lines across central Georgia. Just ahead, I'll show you some of the amazing photos you've shared with us over the past two days. Well, good Thursday morning. You're taking a live look over a beautiful downtown Macon. The time is now 631 a.m on this April the 7th. How are you feeling? I hope you're feeling good. That severe weather, boom, it is all behind us. I'm Wanya Reese. My co-anchor Caitlin Heck is enjoying the morning off. And Courtney, the severe weather is gone, but now cooler weather is on the way. That's right, yeah. And we do still have a few thunderstorms in some of our southern counties, but nothing severe right now. But maybe on the stronger side, you can see some very heavy rain down in Telfair, Wheeler, and Montgomery County. Also, lots of lightning, and that's been evident in a lot of our storms. But what else has been very evident? Hey, saw a hail core within this storm. So if you're in Temperance and China Hill, this is just to the west of that. It looks like maybe about a half an inch in diameter. So that is below severe limits. But nonetheless, these storms still trying to pack a punch as they make their exit. And we will be so glad to see them go after two very, very active days. It is still going to look fairly dreary out there. So as you head out the door this morning, do know that it's not going to necessarily look so pretty just yet, but it will as we head into the second half of the day. 67 right now in the city of Macon. You're looking live on top of Atrium Health now. And it's quiet here. The roads in a lot of spots could still be wet as we did have that heavy rain along that cold front push through most of the area through the overnight hours. And of course, with all the rain we picked up yesterday, that did lead to some flash flooding down trees, down power lines. So you just want to be really, really careful as you're heading out the door this morning, especially in those very heavily impacted areas. We're in the low 60s and upper 50s. That cool air starting to spill in 67 in Macon and Warner Robins, 57 in Monticello. But then on the opposite end of the spectrum near that cold front, 70 in Rochelle. Let's talk about that dry weather and how long it's going to last. I'll have those details in a few minutes. Thank you, Courtney. Many people across central Georgia are once again picking up the pieces following another day of severe weather. One spot recovering after the damaging storms yesterday. That's Johnson County. EMA director Sean Wombo says they saw a wide range of damage. We do have multiple homes in the Cod area, uh, which is located on the eastern side of our county. Uh, multiple homes with damage, um, mobile homes, and and your your standalone structures. We have multiple power, uh, lots of trees down at this time. Uh, we have crews in the area working, trying to uh, determine exactly what all is damaged and how if we, if we have any in injuries. At this point, we have not had any injuries reported, which is a good thing. Wombo says they probably had about 10 homes with trees through them. He urges everyone, unless you have an emergency, to stay put for now as they work to clear power lines and debris from the road. If you have any damage, Wombo is asking that you call their emergency operations center. That number, it's 478-864-9759. That number again for you, it's 478-864-9759. Our meteorologist tracks severe storms through Lawrence County as well. Tony Tolber shared this clip. I want you to check this out. Driving along US 441 in Dublin, County Administrator Brian Rogers says they got a good amount of damage around Gadwell, Rents, and Dexter. Uh, good many trees down. Doesn't appear to be a lot of structural damage at this time, but uh, a lot of power lines down, things of that nature. Uh, fortunately, we you know, we have no reports of injuries. We've had some entrapments and things like that with some vehicles hitting trees that are in the roadway, but no one's um, been injured so far. So we're very thankful for that. Roger says you need to be patient as crews try to clear trees, especially ones with power lines tangled in them. He says crews can't move a lot of the trees until the power company is there to make sure there's no electricity running to the lines. Rogers urges you to stay in and avoid riding around spots to look for damage. He does say the interstate is clear right now, though, through Lawrence County. You may still see some little debris in the road like tree limbs, so just be sure to drive carefully this morning. One area you'll want to avoid in Lawrence County this morning is Springdale Road in Dublin. Look at this picture here. The city says a large tree actually fell across the road, ripping down power lines. They say it's blocked between Beaver Run and Waverly Drive, and the closing is expected to last through today. 
Damage across central Georgia has many people waking up without power this morning. Right now, Georgia Power's outage map shows the biggest impacts in central Georgia are in Bibb and Bleckley counties. In Bibb, there are 51 outages affecting about 582 customers. In Bleckley, there are nine outages affecting 595 customers. And as you can see on that map, there's still a number of impacts that are affecting people all across central Georgia when it comes down to those power outages. Speaking of Bleckley County, damage reports from viewers around Cochrane. Our morning reporter TJ Anthony, he's live in studio. He's sharing photos with you that you have sent in from Bleckley County. TJ, what did the storms look like out there? One, these past couple of days have been crazy to say the least. The photos we have this morning reflect a lot of what you've seen probably around central Georgia the past couple of days. That's down trees and power lines. Well, wow, take a look at these photos. This picture right here is from Christopher Smith. He posted these on our 13 WMAZ Weather Network Facebook page. As you can see, heavy debris on the road in Cochrane, an uprooted tree, even window damage. Ashley Rozier also posted a picture on our Weather Network page showing what the sky looked like as the storm began rolling through. And if you look at these photos from Mary Couch, she sent these through Zip Whip and says that there was a lot of damage in the city. You can see how dark the clouds looked in one of the photos, and you can also see limbs down on the road and in another as well. Wanye, we've seen this was just one of many places across central Georgia seeing impacts from these storms yesterday. I know we've got a few other viewer photos and videos that we're taking a closer look at, look at this morning. That's right, Tyler. Thank you so much for sharing that with us this morning. I want you to check out this video from Dodge County. Carmita Dykes emailed this to us. She says it's storm clouds between Empire and Dubois around 740 last night. And Courtney, could you tell me what this is really quickly, please? That is a shelf cloud that along those straight line winds. Yeah, and it's just amazing because on one side you see the lightning and then literally on the left hand side, you're just seeing the sunlight. I mean, it just shows you how powerful weather could be. Not, not only did storms yesterday bring heavy rain to central Georgia, they also brought hail to some places. Here's a few photos we've gotten from you. Jason Eagleson sent this in from around the Warner Robins Air Park, just north of House in County High School on Highway 96. Trina sent this in from Warner Robins. Wow, I mean, it looks like snow. Honestly, you can see hail covering the ground and Ray. Alrighty then, and it looks like we do not have this last photo right here, so we're going to keep the show moving on now at 637. Speaking of House and County, we now know that a tornado actually did hit part of the county during Tuesday's storms. The National Weather Service confirmed it around Bonaire. Crews are still working to assess the tornado's path, but they say it was an EF3 with estimated winds between, get this, 158 to 206 miles per hour. More surveys are expected to happen on today. Well, one Bonaire family must rebuild after losing their home in Tuesday's storms. The mom and her two boys are okay, but Sydney Morstad lost the memories her house once held. When Morstad was pregnant with her second son, her husband died after a car accident. She says she didn't let many people into her home after he died because she wanted his belongings preserved. But the storm did a lot of damage and many of those items are now lost. Morstad says you never think something like this could happen to you, but then it does. I just have to be positive. God has taught me that. I, if I sit back and cry, you know, I have to be strong for my boys. And I know that Josh would want me to be the best mother in person for my family. It's definitely sending out prayers to her and her family. Amor Sad says right now she still can't find her two wedding bands and a ring with their anniversary date engraved on it. Her brother's house also got destroyed and a pine tree crashed through her grandfather's home. As we continue to follow damage from the storms, check out this video of the possible tornado in Chris County. This is video from Lake Blackshear. You can see what looks to be a funnel cloud forming and spinning in the distance. Across the state, here's video near Leslie, Georgia. That's about 30 miles north of Albany. A storm chaser caught video of this likely tornado in Sumter County. Oh my goodness. Wow, it's, it's just absolutely amazing. It's video of it touching down and moving across a field. Georgia is now under a state of emergency because of all this weather. Governor Brian Kemp issued it yesterday in response to the damage from the severe storm system. It runs through next Friday the 15th unless it gets renewed. Along with the Peach State, Macon Bibb County put a local state of emergency in place. We'll update you on that and have more storm coverage coming up right after our next break. But first, let's take a look at three other headlines we're following for you this morning. The time is 640. Warner Robins police are investigating after a shooting that left a teen hurt. 
It happened in the 600 block of Langley Street last night. Chief John Wagner says someone shot an 18 year old in the shoulder during an argument. He says the teen is stable. There's no information on a shooter right now. We'll continue to bring you updates on air and online as we learn more. This morning, Warner Robins mayor will speak at the Robins Regional Chamber's Eggs and Issues Breakfast. Topics include an update on her priorities and progress in her first 90 days. The city's efforts in economic development and updates on parks and recreations and public safety. It's happening at 730 this morning at the Kerry Martin Conference Center in Warner Robins. The chamber says registration for the event is currently closed, though. Thousands of elementary school students in central Georgia are getting some free shoes. The congregation of Beth Yeshia International in Macon will donate over 8,200 pairs of shoes. I love this. This is going to go to kids from Bibb, Houston, Peach, Monroe, and Dooley counties. It's through their shoe by shoe program to help kids in need. They've partnered with the rescue mission of Middle Georgia to help give them out. The mission says representatives from each school district will come to their spot today to go ahead and pick up those shoes. Schools start delivering them on next week. Your time is now 641 AM and Courtney, I'm so happy that things are starting to calm down now. That's right. Yeah, because as we've seen for really the past 10 15 minutes, there has really been some considerable damage across the area and it was thanks to not only this cold front that is starting to push through this cold front actually has been the calmest portion of our weather that we've had the past couple of days. But thanks to those two just batches of severe storms that we had one of course on Tuesday that brought that EF3 tornado that the National Weather Service now confirmed in Warner Robins and then of course all of the rain and wind from yesterday. So please, please, please as you're heading out today while today we finally can take a breath. Once this gets out of the way, we are done with our severe weather for several days. But nonetheless, there is still a lot of damage left to be cleaned up because of all the rain and storms that moved in yesterday. So please be careful as you're driving out and about. There's still going to be a lot of debris in the road, power lines in the road, some maybe localized flooding in some of the roads from all the rain. So be extra vigilant as you're heading out the door this morning. And just something to note with those severe storms, TJ showed one of those photos of the window that was destroyed. That is why we say stay away from doors and windows, especially when you have a multi day severe threat like that. Debris was already scattered around, and then we had that second batch of rain and storms roll in, and that wind can pick up that debris and essentially bring it through your window. So that is why we say that, and that is a prime example of why you need to stay away from doors and windows when severe weather rolls through the area. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on out there right now. We do have rain and thunderstorms starting to push into Telfair County. Some very heavy rain, lots of lightning. We did see a hail core within this as well. I've been seeing this get close to three quarters of an inch in diameter. It looks like it just went down to about half an inch. But nonetheless, if you live between China Hill and Cobbville, just to the northwest of Highway 319 there in Telfair County, you could have some small hail that is going to be on the way along with that heavy rain. You're probably already hearing all the rain and thunderstorm activity. Speaking of rain, boy, did we pick up a lot of it. In fact, just yesterday at the airport in Macon, we picked up over four inches of rain. That was a record, but not only was it a record, it also was more than we normally pick up climatologically in the entire month. We picked more than that up in just one day. Here's a look at the rainfall totals over the past 12 hours, over five inches of rain in some spots, and then you go back 48 hours. I know this has five days, but really it was just the past two days. Upwards of nine inches of rain in some spots, a lot of it in places like Bibb County, Crawford County, Taylor County, with most of that very, very heavy and impressive rainfall. Thankfully, we are going to be done with that because not only do our low lying areas, our yards, I know mine personally looks like I'm back in South Florida near the Everglades. Our rivers don't need any more rain because you can see they are going to go into flood stage. In fact, the Okmulgee River and Macon already in minor flood stage. It will crest as we head into Friday and Saturday, just under 24 feet there. So if you were hoping to go to the river this weekend, one, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to probably be too cold, but two, those boat ramps are all going to be underwater. And not only is the Okmulgee being impacted, the Oconee River, I looked at the Flint River as well. Sorry, that looks the same way. But of course, because this is further south, it's going to take a little while. This is going to crest Sunday through Monday because of the way the rivers flow from north to south. So just something to keep in mind that could impact some parts of the Amerson River Park uh, because of the Okmulgee River being in flood stage as we head into the next couple of days. Today, once we get rid of the rain and the cloud cover, that's very evident this morning. We'll have lots of sunshine through the day. 
today. Low 70s. It will be breezy though. So if you are picking up from all the storms over the past couple of days, do keep in mind it will be breezy tonight. Forecast looks great. We'll be near 60 for what you guys know. I'm very excited about the Braves home opener. If you're heading up north to Atlanta, it'll be cold and breezy too. So bundle up. Take a look at this. We'll wake up in the 30s Saturday and Sunday with highs only in the low 60s on Saturday, but a well-deserved dry stretch all the way through Tuesday. Our next rain chance, very small, could come next Wednesday.